What's going on everybody? Welcome to another Open CV with Python tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be talking about object detection like face detection or eye detection with Open CV in Python using Har Cascades. So um, to start, first we're going to just use some Har Cascades uh, in this tutorial and I'll show you how they work and then in the next tutorial will be quite a doozy uh, we'll talk about how to create hard cascades. I'm going to try to get it all in one video. Hopefully it won't take too long. But anyway, uh, on to this video. I'll put a link to this in the description. If I forget, I really probably will forget to put a link to this one in the description. Uh, let me know. There will be a link to the tutorial in the description as well, and then this link would be in that tutorial. Now, this is just a quick um, kind of dump of... Uh, so various cascades and the way that these work these are hard cascades and the way that they work is they are massive XML files with a lot of feature sets and these feature sets correspond to a very specific type of object in our case we might be looking for a full body this is a left eye so if you had like a like a some sort of biometric scanner you could scan for like the you could find the left eye and then begin the scan um, anyway, you got bodies, you got faces, you've got lower bodies, you've got a profile face, like a profile picture probably, or something, a right eye, Russian plates, there's also probably an American plate somewhere around here, yeah, pro well, I don't know, anyway, um, so you, you can find most of these, and even if you can't find it in this little tiny list, you can find horror cascades for all kinds of things, like faces, smiles, cars, license plates, I'm trying to think of some other really common ones, but Stuff like that you can just find, but a lot of times you might have an object you want to track that you can't find, and that's what we'll talk about next time. Till then, we'll grab the eye, and let's get uh, the frontal face default. So these two files, go ahead and, and, and take these files, download them. Uh, just take note, these are licensed to Intel, so make sure you understand the license before you go using these, you know, commercially and stuff. So, uh, take these two cascades, download them, put them in your, um, and to download them, you can probably, you just go to raw, right click, save as, okay? Um, save them to where you're working, both of these, and then you're ready to go. And here, I'm gonna show you how, how they work. So, um, to start, you're gonna wanna have NumPy as MP and CV2 imported. And now we're going to define the two cascades. We're going to have a face cascade equals. Um, and this will just be the loading of that cascade. So it'll be cv2.cascade classifier, classifier. And then we load in that cascade, which was har cascade underscore frontal, frontal underscore or actually it's not an underscore, frontal face underscore default dot h, no, xml, html. <laughs> anyway, uh, face cascade was that, and then now we're going to say the i underscore cascade, and that file uh, was, let's see, har cascade i dot xml. So uh, those are your two, the two, um, Cascades that you want. Let me make sure that horror cascade was actually called. Yeah, just horror cascade underscore I. All right, so those are your two cascades. They're loaded in. Now let's go ahead and uh, load in our, our webcam. So cap equals cv2.video capture. And as usual from the rest of this series, you'll probably use a zero to bring in your camera feed. I'm going to use a one because my first camera is being used. So um, there's your capture. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to say, wow, true. What do we want to do? Or we're going to say ret image equals cap dot read. We're going to convert it to gray immediately. So we're going to say gray equals cv2 dot convert color uh, image cv2 dot color underscore bgr to gray. Now we're going to say the faces here are going to be equal to face underscore cascade dot detect multi scale and then we're going to detect on gray and then we're going to say we're going to use 1.3 and 5. We can talk about these probably later just you can use these basically it's going to be 
Um, depending on the size of the image you use and the likelihood that you might find it in your image, you would you would change these up. But we're going to just use these figures for now, and we'll in the next tutorial we'll probably get far more in depth into that. Then so faces will be found, and then we're going to say four x y width height in faces. We want to just draw a rectangle. So we're going to say cv2.rectangle. We'll draw it on the image. The starting point will be x, y. The, um, the ending point of the rectangle will be x plus w, and then y plus h. So to draw a rectangle, again, you've got the starting point, then you've got the ending point, OK? And so this is just how we're calculating those points. We're going to make this a uh, blue rectangle, so 255, 0, 0, and the line width will be 2. And then um, we will we probably get away with just drawing just that. But what's going to happen is in faces, you probably want to do, like, you don't want to find eyes outside of a face, right? <laughs> that's, that's bad news, you know? But... But even even if even thinking about it, um, an eye will never be out of a face unless it's an eyeball. And in that case, the features that determine an eye are not going to recognize an eyeball most likely because what determines an eye, it, like your eyebrows will will come into effect, your eyelids and your lashes and all that kind of stuff. So uh, morbidity aside, you're not going to find eyes outside of the face. So. Um, so, but we will find eyes, hopefully, within the region of the image that the face is in. So we're going to define ROI gray is going to be equal to gray and then basically that the location of the face. So we're going to say Y colon Y plus H and then X colon X plus W. So this is just that region. It's that starting point and then the ending point and then the starting point again and that ending point. And, uh, and with region of image, it's, you know, Y then an X, not X, Y. So uh, we've got that. And then ROI color for later on when we reimpose it, basically, it is pretty much this exact thing, only image, not gray. Image. Okay. Then eyes will be equal to, probably don't need that extra space, eyes will be equal to, to the i underscore cascade dot detect um, multi scale, and we're going to detect against um, the ROI gray for our eyes, and then we'll just use defaults for now. So we could, in theory, we might even get away with defaults in the faces, but we might find too many faces. I don't know. We'll see. Um, and then four. E X E Y E W E H, so I X I Y I with and height. Uh, in eyes, we're gonna now just simply at this point we just have to draw it. So um, we will do cv2 dot rectangle. We're gonna draw it on the ROI color, and uh, then it starts at E X E Y and stretches out to EX plus EW, and then EY plus A. <laughs> uh, EH, don't do A. Anyway, <laughs> and then the color we'll do is uh, 0, 255, 0, and then the line width will be a 2. And then outside of this silly for loop, let's do CV2.M show image and image and then we're going to say k equals cv2 dot weight key 30 and 0 x f oops f f if k equals 27 break this is just so we can press the escape key cap dot release when that happens and then cv2 dot destroy all windows and let's run this bad boy. Syntax error. Ah, oh, I did this the last time. Why do I keep doing that? <laughs> anyway, okay. So uh, we've got this camera running. Now I have to look at it. But 
Well, you're probably my my mouth. Get let me move this over. Actually, dang it. <laughs> uh, I can't really move it, and then you see it because uh, it's hanging over. Anyway, um, so like your eyes will be detected, and hopefully your face is detected. Now, if I take off my glasses, it probably works a whole lot better. So uh, the glasses are just going to cause problems, um, just because they're like one more thing on your face. And then my mouth is apparently also an eye um, with this cascade. <laughs> so anyway, uh, there's that. Um, but I think that's pretty cool that you can detect a face. And as, as at least for me, um, it is extremely efficient for object detection. Uh, it does not take much um, computing to do it, right? It, it, it's going to use like the Har cascade itself is very small. Uh, let's see the, the cascade here, the face is pretty big cause it's hard to find faces, but so it's, but it's not even that big, right? It's 909 kilobytes. <laughs> okay. So, um, so yeah, uh, it, it doesn't take much memory to really load those into Ram and be like looking for those. So that's pretty cool. Like it's just so, they're just so small yet. They're so powerful for detecting things. So, um, naturally, uh, you, you would be inclined to want to make your own cascades because chances are maybe you want to track some something else. Make, maybe you want to track um, a, a phone or glasses or a microphone or just anything. Like, how would you even get started tracking something? Well, it turns out you can make your own har cascades, but har cascade creation can be hard. <laughs> anyway. Um, if you laughed, I appreciate it. So that's what we're gonna be talking about in the next tutorial is how we can go about creating our very own hard cascades, which is actually quite the process, but well, you can get through it. It can be done. And once you do that, you can track any object like that is so cool. So that's what we're gonna be talking about in the next tutorial. If you have questions, comment, concern, whatever. Oh, you know what? Actually, before I kick you guys off, let me just try the defaults on this face detection. Um, so it's not that bad. It finds a face and it's not finding faces all over my house. Um, but later on when we do our own cat, well, I just found some weird faces there. When we do our own, uh, horror cascade classifier, uh, you'll see that it's very important that you throw something in there. And it's probably because our cascade is not going to be the greatest because to make really nice hard cascades, you need a lot of RAM, a lot of CPU and a lot of time. Um, uh, none of which we're really going to have in like a short tutorial. So uh, ours won't be the greatest, so we've got to have some, some stringent rules on it. Anyway, questions, comments, leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.